So, um, a couple of other announcements before we talk about school budgets in the time of COVID here. Um, next week on the 7th is the annual meeting that will happen in this auditorium at 6.30 p.m. Um, and that's where, you know, we get votes from the floor to kind of approve what we're asking for in terms of surplus funds, which we'll talk about tonight. Um, and what to do with the surplus funds in terms of going into the reserve funds as well as what the overall budget is. Um, this year, uh, in terms of the overall district budget, the primary goal um, has been minimizing as much as possible the tax increases that have happened across the state um, due to the fact that real estate prices have gone up astronomically. Uh, during the COVID pandemic, Vermont was seen as a good place for people to come and get out of the big city. And so there was a lot of competition for real estate and for housing here. And what it has done, it is, is driven up um, the value of people's properties quite a bit. And when the property values go up, um, people are expected to pay more taxes because of that extra value. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But in terms of the creation of this budget, uh, the real goal here was to make sure that we're continuing the good works that we've started, but also trying to take into account the impact that, that that change in property values will have on the taxpayers this year. And again, this is not just Randolph, Braintree, and Brookfield. This is across the state that this has happened. Um, in terms of the overall OSS budget proposal that we are putting in front of the voters uh, next week, is a bit of an increase in terms of expenses, uh, which we'll talk about, but an even bigger increase in terms of revenue. So we will actually be asking for less from the taxpayers um, overall than we did in the previous year. This year's budget, the, the year that we are currently living in, is $22,165,000. What we are looking for to run everything uh, across the district next year is $23,534,000. That's a total change of about $1.3, million. But with that $1.3, $1.4 million increase, we've also generated additional revenue of $2.3 million. So we're bringing in more money than the additional that we plan on spending. So we will actually be asking for about a million dollars less from the taxpayers than we did last year. Now, in terms of that $1.3 million increase, we kind of break it up into two big categories. We've got what's called discretionary and then we've got what's called contractual and obligatory. Um, discretionary money are things that we are choosing to do because we believe that they are good for kids. Um, things like uh, putting in next year or attempting to put in next year uh, a late bus uh, so the students can stay after school, get some extra help with, with homework. Um, they can participate more in the extracurricular activities that we offer and it's not a burden on parents to have to pick them up kind of at an odd hour um, to see them safely home. And so in terms of that 1.3 million, 365,000 of it's discretionary, the other million of it is contractual. In other words, these are things that we simply have to pay for. Um, salaries go up every year, that's agreed to by a contract uh, with the staff. Um, there was a considerable amount of inflation uh, this past year, so we had to budget for between a 16 to 20 percent increase in terms of supplies and fuel oil and uh, fuel for the buses and things like that. And so that's what that line is all about. Um, it's important to remember as we kind of enter into this discussion a little deeper that your local taxes that you pay really come from two different sources. Um, and in terms of the school taxes, uh, you have a portion of it that is controlled directly by the district. Um, and that's in terms of how much we're spending versus the revenues that, that we're bringing in. And then we have this gigantic portion of it that's out of our control. And that has to do with the common level of appraisal. That goes back to the idea that property values across the state have increased um, considerably this year. And so with the values of people's homes and properties going up, the state is gonna expect people to pay more in taxes. That is out of our control. What is within our control, how we're managing our, our, our own budget, our own expenses and our own revenues, um, we've actually done a very good job. 
In terms of what we're looking for next year, um, the, tax, the, the school controlled piece would cause people's taxes to go down by 7.5 cents per $100 of assessed value, which is about a $290 annual savings on the average priced home um, in our area. Average priced home right now is $385,000. Um, last year, uh, it was similar. Um, the district did its part. We actually, if it were just due to the district, people would have seen a, a 6.8 uh, cent per hundred dollars of assessed value decrease um, in their taxes, or about $192 uh, annually. So again, the district has a certain amount of control and we've been doing our parts. What we are asking for from the community um, has actually been going down for the last two years. To do a comparison about, you know, the school's impact, what we have control over, and the CLA impact, you know, what's happening because of the change in real estate values, um, you can kind of see on this screen here. Um, if it were up to the district, just the changes that the district are making in the budget for next year, everyone would see a $290 decrease for an average priced home, right? Average priced home, $385,000 this year. If your home is worth uh, twice that, you would see twice that decrease, right? So it, it expands and uh, it, it ex in changes linearly um, if your value of your house is different from the 385. Um, on the other side, the CLA, right? Common level of appraisal impact, um, what you see are some pretty dramatic changes here, and that's because, again, people's, uh, the value of their properties have changed dramatically. In Braintree, um, when the state went out and did its equity study, it found that Braintree is only paying 88.7, paying on 88.7% of the value of their properties. So people would expect to see a $777 increase in their annual taxes if it were just due to the CLA. Uh, Brookfield, because that town reassessed last year, um, they're actually going to see uh, a, a decrease because of how um, property values changed um, over the last year of $659 um, on the average priced home. And in Randolph, if it were just due to the change in property values, folks would see a $669 increase in their annual property taxes, school property taxes, um, for next year. So what we have to do to figure out what your actual taxes are going to be is we have to put the two together. The decrease that people would see because of what the school has done together with the increase that is occurring because of the change in property values. And so this is what folks can expect if they vote yes on this year's school budget. In Braintree, um, on an average priced home of $385,000, you would expect to see about a $488 increase annually. In Brookfield, again, because folks reassessed last year, the town reassessed last year, on the average priced home, you would see a $948 decrease uh, in your tax bill. And in Randolph, uh, we would see a $379 increase on the average priced home in our town. So these are some pretty significant changes, and again, I cannot stress enough um, that this is just due to the change in people's property values because of the demand on property in Vermont over the last year or two um, during the end of the COVID pandemic. Um, a couple of important pieces to point out to folks is that uh, you may be eligible for a property tax or a homesteader's credit, it's called. Um, basically, if your household income is under $134,000, you could qualify for up to an $8,000 property tax credit. So if you use a tax preparer, it's important to talk with them about this and make sure that that paperwork gets filled out. If you are doing your own taxes, um, you're looking for form HS-22 called the Homestead Declaration and Property uh, Tax Credit Claim. And I put the, the link up there, which I'll leave for, for just a moment um, for folks that are interested. Um, there used to be a limit um, if the value of your property was uh, over $400,000. Um, that was kind of a cutoff in terms of uh, benefit from the property tax credit. But the legislature recognizing that um, property values have gone up so much this year, I believe are working on actually adjusting that limit. Um, but I, I don't know where, where they're settling at at this point in time. So this is the basic budget overview. Um, if you go and you vote yes on our budget, 
these are the expected changes that you would see in your school property taxes, depending upon the town that you live in, right? A fair increases in, in Braintree and in Randolph um, and a pretty sizable de decrease um, if you are a Brookfield resident. And again, I wanna stress it a uh, hundred times, the district is asking less from the taxpayers than it, than it did last year. It's done this two years in a row. These changes are due to things out of our control. They're due to the changes in the value of uh, people's real estate. Um, we've got to talk a little bit about surplus and reserve funds uh, because these are articles that folks will also be voting on um, come voting day next week. Uh, and it's important to kind of understand a little bit about the difference between the two because um, the, the words sometimes are used inter interchangeably. They're not they do not mean the same thing. There are surplus funds and there are reserve funds. Surplus funds are any monies that remain at the end of a fiscal year for the school district. And we typically, um, especially the last couple of years with all the grants and things that we've been receiving, um, we've typically had a very large surplus. As part of the voting process next week, we will be asking the voters um, to vote to allow us to use this surplus money in certain ways. Some of the money will be rolled over um, based upon this plan to help subsidize taxes for next year to help bring your tax rates a little bit lower. Um, and some of the money is designed to go into what we call reserve funds. So if you vote for money to go into a reserve fund, um, the reserve fund typically has a name like the operations fund or the transportation fund. And the money, once it gets in there, can only be used for that purpose. Um, and the board has oversight on that. Um, I, as the superintendent, nor anyone in the district can access those reserve funds without bringing it for, in front of the board and having them vote so that they have their oversight and are making sure that we're using it for what the voters intended. So, at the end of last year, due to the federal reimbursement grants that we received that were related to the American Recovery Act and to uh, a lot of the, the COVID money that we received, we have a significant surplus. We, we have a significant amount of money that was left over at the end of last uh, budget year, and that's 1.3 million. And so if folks are voting yes uh, when they go to the polls next week, um, what we are proposing in those votes is to use uh, $1,050,000 of that surplus money to subsidize your taxes. So in other words, it, that is money that you will not have to pay. It will not have to come from the taxpayers because we already have it. What I uh, am proposing is that we take that uh, $1,050,000 and we split it up equally over the next three years so that folks uh, feel that tax benefit, that tax reduction for at least three years. And then the remainder um, of that money would go into various reserve accounts to kind of support what foreseeable needs that we have. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, in a slide or two. Now, what we've been doing uh, since the start of COVID, because taxes and uh, the budgetary needs were unpredictable, um, things were changing quite rapidly at the time, is that we wanted to make sure that we built up a buffer to help the taxpayers in our three towns. And so what we've been doing is that each year that we have uh, surplus money, we use it um, to subsidize future taxes. So if you look at the little chart here, you see 2019, 2020, we had a significant surplus that year. What did we use it for? We took 826,000 of it and used it to reduce people's taxes in the 2021, 20, 22 school year. There was 413,000 of it that was used this year um, to subsidize this current budget to reduce people's taxes. And there's 413,000 still left over that will be used next year to subsidize folks' taxes to bring taxes down. In the end of the 2020, 21 school year, um, right, we did the same thing. We split it up equally over three years and we're proposing to do the same thing with this year's surplus. And so we've always got a significant amount of money that we are able to use to subsidize to reduce folks' taxes with. And we've also built this this way um, because if you take a look at it, it took three years to build it up so that folks were getting the maximum benefit from it. 
if at some point in time we're not having these large surpluses, it will also take three years in time to kind of wean ourselves off those subsidies, which gives us time to adjust other aspects of our budget to compensate. So there was a tremendous amount of planning that went into how this was set up. So again, 1.3 million in reserve funds are there. We're proposing that uh, 1,050,000 of it is split up equally over the next three uh, budget years to help reduce people's taxes. That leaves a little bit left over, and this is what we will be asking people to vote on next week. Um, we have a transportation uh, vehicle bus reserve fund. What that fund is used for is just that. Every year we try to replace two buses so that no bus in our fleet gets to be more than six or seven years old. Um, we actually have a significant amount of money in that reserve fund right now, so we are not asking the taxpayers to um, send any surplus money that way. In our building and maintenance fund, um, this one was set aside originally before my time um, to make sure that when the roofs needed to be replaced on the buildings, which happens about every 20 years, there was enough money uh, to do that work without having to go out to the taxpayers and go to bond. Um, we have a significant amount of, of money in that reserve fund. Um, and I'm recommending that we put an additional 100000 into it um, from surplus um, because we did spend uh, quite a bit on the heating repairs at the high school this year. Um, that was a three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar $400,000 project by the time everything is, is done and complete. And so the idea is to keep this fund um, at a good level so that when big projects come up, we don't have to go out and take a loan, and we don't have to, uh, to go out and have people's taxes increase to cover um, these expenses when they happen. Um, we have put money aside in the legal fund. We've never had to touch it. Um, but with the COVID pandemic, there was an exodus from the teaching profession. And as folks have probably read in the papers over the last couple of years, um, I think uh, they re hopefully folks realize how difficult sometimes it is to get the best people to, to come in because the candidate pool just isn't there anymore. Um, and typically in a situation like this where, you know, you're getting good people, you're trying to train them, um, there are typically a lot more human resources issues that we have to deal with and have to manage and oftentimes um, that requires legal counsel to do that. So this is just there um, to help us out in case that becomes necessary. Um, we put in a few years back a reserve fund um, for special education. And the reason that we did that was because the state is changing how they fund special education um, for schools. Uh, in the old days, it used to be what was called a reimbursement method. So in other words, if we had students that were moving into the district over the course of the year, um, we knew that the state would reimburse us for those unanticipated costs. They have moved to a block grant system where they give us a chunk of money at the beginning of the year, and that's pretty much it unless we have some um, gigantic, unusual cost that comes in, and then they do reimburse a little bit. But pretty much we get that chunk of money at the beginning of the year. So if we have some major changes, we have a bunch of students that move in or a couple of um, very high need students that move in that are very high cost, that could have a dramatic impact on us being able to continue to deliver the services that we planned for that year. So it is nice to have this reserve fund in place so that we can tap from it should we get into a circumstance um, where we've got students that are moving into the district, which we often do, that, that have high needs, to make sure that we can fulfill their needs while still fulfilling um, the needs of the students that uh, the block grant covers. And so we're recommending that 50000 is added to that special education fund. And then the last piece is the operations fund. Um, really what this is, is, you know, we talked about taking the surplus money and spreading it out over three years um, so that we can use it to subsidize people's taxes. The money in this operational fund, it's just the resting place for that money, right? We've already uh, said what, how much we're going to spend and what year we're going to spend it in, uh, but we need a place for that money to sit until that year comes up so that we can, can draw from it. 
And so I am recommending um, we move uh, $1,110,438 over into that operations fund, um, right? A million fifty thousand of it is to, to subsidize the next three years for people's taxes. The little bit that, that is a remainder um, has no specific purpose to it at this point in time. It is there just to build up a little bit of a cushion in case we have an operational issue. Um, maybe, you know, we, we come across a really fantastic software program that's going to help the students with math. Um, maybe there is an operational need that we have, and this way we have the money available at that point in time to use it for. So there's a little bit in there above and beyond that $1,050,000, excuse me, to cover a situation like that. And that, unless there are specific questions, um, is the totality of the presentation. Um, pretty much everybody is online, um, so if there are questions about anything that I've talked about, or if you want me to go into further detail on anything, please ask. And so with no questions, um, just a couple of other reminders. Uh, at the school offices, um, as well as at the town offices, there are copies of our annual report um, to the voters. Um, that has also been emailed out to the community, and I will email it out again um, to everyone at the beginning of the week. Um, there is a lot of discussion on all the good works that have happened at each of the schools. Um, my discussion that is in that annual report uh, focuses in on the budget and specifically the things that we've talked about. Um, and so if you're trying to go to the polls informed, um, that is a, a good resource to have in hand. Um, and so please do look for that. It's also posted up on the school district website. So unless there are questions, I will bid everyone a good night and my best hopes and wishes go out to our boys basketball team as they compete in the semifinals tonight at Chester. Good luck. Thank you.